Yorana, and welcome to FM Tahiti. I'm Pelham. Um, thanks for sticking with me this far, if you've um, been watching the others. In this episode, we've got two matches. We're going to play Union Rimatara, or Rimatara, who are our next door neighbours, more or less. So they're only a I don't know, it's about 100 kilometers off the coast of us or something like that. So there are, there are potential big rivals, also from the Austral Islands. So we've got them in the league. And then after that, we play Taha, or the Vanillas as they're known, um, in the quarterfinal of the Inter-Island Cup. Uh, just before we do the match, I'll just take you through the schedule so you can see the matches that have been played since. So the Chevrolet's match was the last match I think uh, I recorded for the channel, which we uh, script a three all. Uh, played the Corollas in the um, league again, so we beat them in the cup earlier on, and we managed to scrape uh, a win against them, even though it was uh, not only generally a dull match. But we had someone sent off, so we had Jordan Aaron sent off in the 70th minute after he'd scored a penalty earlier on in the match. I believe that's Jordan Chisholm, a kind of slightly mardy uh, striker, got two goals ruled for offside, or ruled out for offside, I should probably uh, say. So he's, he's still getting offside, still doing the business. We scraped the win. Then we had Madre de Dios afterwards, so a team from the Marquesa Islands also. He managed to go and bag a goal for his Chisholm nice and early. Uh, but then that was it. Again, it was a very kind of dull, low energy match. I think my team are getting gradually more and more knackered. So this run here, is, I guess, is our worst run. We've had the three draws in a row. We got back to winning ways, but I'm not convinced by the depth we have or the lack of depth we have in the squad. So playing Union Rimatara, uh, known as Union because they are, um, I think it's a commune system they use for their government there on the island. Let's sort this out. So Jordan Aaron was on the bench last match because he was um, suspended. He's back from suspension, so we'll put him on for the clerks. Clerks are okay, but he's just filling space essentially and we will leave everything else. You might notice a few of the players are wanted and it's just generally wanted, it doesn't take much. A lot of them are wanted by teams in the Premiership um, but that doesn't mean much. No, there have been no offers, I mean I guess the transfer window shut, there's been no one sniffing around, nothing in the news there. I think it's just because we've got a limited pool of players and that's for everybody really. So they've been sniffing around the limited pool that we've got. So a 4-4-2 or 4-4 humping 2 for us versus their 4-4-2. Uh, so this should be a clash. I kind of hope we really destroy them. We did beat um, Motu 1 5-1. Um, I kind of wish we could have done this for, saved it for this team because I want them to become our rivals. I want us to develop a competitive rivalry with them and crush them. Whether we actually do or not, it needs to be seen. We've got them in a couple of matches time as well, but that would be for the uh, mutiny uh, trophy as well, where we could do with beating them just to try and keep on track for qualifying from that group. I don't actually know how good they are generally. I forgot to check um, where they were in the league at that point. I'm trying to remember where you get the... Look at the league table, where were they? So they're six, they're not terrible. After that run of games, um, we were top by a point. Oh, Chisholm, is he offside? If, I just assume he kind of is offside at this point, so when he's not, I'm actually genuinely surprised. Okay. So Daniel Naran, I still think he's our favourite Naran of the two. Long ball. Yeah, he wasn't offside this time, he actually manages to finish reasonably well. Maybe you can hear me talking about him, because he's the one I want to replace, ideally, when this youth intake comes in, which I know I'm pining for a lot. See, they've had to check, because even they know he's probably going to be outside. Now, I'm pining for this youth intake. I really want a striker that I can replace Chisholm with. He's probably too good, actually, to be replaced, but I can hope. I can hope that I've just taken a disliking to him. It's not very logical. 
blocks. That was a, they say a good tackle. It looked like he went through the back of him, but as long as they didn't get picked up for it, that's fine. Can live with that. I am thinking of changing the skin and layout that I've got. I don't like how the default football manager forces you to have these windows here. None of these are particularly useful. See, when you put the match stats one on, which is the one underneath, you can't edit it like you can this match stats window. Go on, Richards, get it in. Chisholm. We're very good at picking up kind of scraps and mistakes and second balls and things like that. So we're not necessarily a very skillful team, but we are a very industrious team. Yes, I'm thinking of changing the skin because I want more useful information like this in that other menu. I also want to see if there are any that use um, the badges and logos a little bit differently because I've got one for every team. I'd like to be able to see them a little bit more often or have, have the kits appear a little bit more often than just in that kind of general uh, window or when you get the news window. Naren looked like a good shot, a shot that he uh, shaped up there. We're putting them under pressure. They've not had any shots. I mean, we've only had three, and it's only 25 minutes in, but go on. And again, Henderson was a player I didn't really warm to to begin with, but he's got about five goals. He's he's doing all right. He's, he's tall. I think some games in FM where I have just started searching for players by height to try and find a um, good target, man. Oh, he's completely unmarked there. That was a good block, but we were lucky. There were some cases where I found some tall defenders that decided might be a good target man in a shout just because of the heading. They had a little good period then. If we can get to half time at 1 0, that's fine. 11 fouls from us. We are getting stuck in. I'm okay with that. I think I've set it up as well so teams can get fined for excessive uh Go on, one of you. A couple of attempts there, none of them went in, it wasn't meant to be. Yeah, I think I've set it up so you can get fined for not controlling your players if there's too many um, yellow cards and red cards in a, a single match. It's going well, but you can do even better. They don't care, I'm still listening keenly. Basically, unless I say everything's amazing and the sun's shining out of their respective asses. They don't respond particularly positively. Probably partly to do with their personality as well. There's one leader in there, one fairly professional player. I think there's someone who's fickle or temperamental. Some low determination, some unambitious, a couple of balanced. I think it might be Henderson and Manuel who are the good personality ones, the leader and the... Um, Fairly professional one. Chisum definitely isn't. I say that and it's like he does he knows. Chisum did well. We have to give him credit for that. Picked up the ball, made the run, managed to get the ball into Henderson who just couldn't do anything with it. It was just a little bit out of position for him. Increasingly thinking Chisum if I do ever replace him with a better youth striker, it would be a good impact sub at the very least. He's the fastest player I've got. He could be really good when the defence is tiring. Maybe that's what I'll try as well. Williamson needs a bit more game time, so I'll probably put him on the Henderson in a second. So missed the header. Just get rid of it, McIntyre. Just get rid. Counter-attack. That's what we want. It's up now before it all goes wrong. Bring on Williamson for Henderson. Anyone else is tired? Manuel's tiring first, I guess. Seth. Guess that will do for the moment. I kind of want to. I'll probably take Naran off for uh, Nicholas Dumas, the lone striker, in a little bit.
Um, so maybe after we've done the quarter final, I'm playing another league match or in the meeting trophy. Oh, good goal, Henderson. I feel bad because you're coming off now. That's that's fine. Showing you can do it. Anything Chisholm can do, he can do. Didn't even look. He knows exactly where the goal is. Good feet for a big man. Yeah, do it. Sorry. Gotta stick with my decision. So yeah, maybe after the quarter final, I'll start Williamson instead of Henderson. No, that's wrong, that's the wrong way around. I'll start Williamson instead of Chisholm. And then maybe sixtieth, seventieth minute on comes Chisholm to kind of destroy the defence with his, his pace. Maybe a few issues there, but we'll see. There, what a routine. So to the near post for the flick on and Chisholm at the back. Take it out. Maybe I just need to keep saying awful things about Chisholm to keep him scoring. It's good delivery by Wit as well at the corner. He's meant to be the corner specialist, but Manuel's just a lot better in open play than he is, I think. And again, that might be the kind of different tools for different jobs. If I need someone to run in and unpick a defence, it's going to be Manuel. If I need somebody who can deliver the set pieces because they're a bit ropey in the air, then on comes weight. I don't really have much in the way of scouting to check this before a match, and I have no data analyst facility, so it'll be a long time before I'm able to tell this beforehand. But you know, in the long run, something to consider. I don't know if any of you use data analysis facilities that often. I think every now and again I've had them upgraded, not on this database, just generally. And I've never really noticed the difference. But then the upgrades I've always gone for have been like the lower end, from no data analysis to suddenly having some, or the bottom rung of that, rather than anything else. So that 3 0 will, 3 0 win. Uh, cements us at the top, so even if uh, Titaro win their game in hand, we've still got a point uh, on them. And because our next match is against Taha now, I'll just probably continue through. I won't do an edit, there's not much points. 12 games unbeaten, so it's that very first game of the season. Be 13 rather than 12 if we had lost uh, that one. Joel David and Dumas called up for the under 20s for the CT societies. And we're still getting like three or four players called up for the Austral Islands um, job, their uh, job um, team, which is good because they're getting the international experience, but they're not necessarily being removed from the team for a long period of time, which causes us issues. So look, I've still not got ahead of youth development. I've got a little while until I really need one, but if we try and offer him something, it doesn't look especially great. He's just balanced, nothing special there. If we try and offer him this contract, ooh. We could probably get him. I'm going to walk away and have another look after the next match for some um, youth development heads because if their wage demands are now coming down, because before people like that were asking for about 140, 150 and they just wouldn't negotiate down enough. But if they're starting to, then maybe I can get someone with a slightly better personality. Balanced is okay. I would take balanced over nothing. Sporting Chance, is that Yvonne? Yvonne, on uh, Petit thinks, he's, not, he's, only, he's been away for like three of those matches on international duty. Yeah, get wrecked. Call him, I've, I've used him once, I think, as a sub. 
does leave me a little bit thin on the ground now. Maybe I shouldn't have done that, but... He wasn't good enough to start. They hadn't been here long enough for me to give him an opportunity. Slight interest from Jersey Jones. It's not great. I'm starting to build up my kind of background knowledge of players, which is good, because I'll... If, I, if my learns aren't working out like that, eventually I'm going to need to replace someone. Naran's been training well. I like to praise players for training well, but I need them to be doing it for a couple of weeks, ideally. So McIntyre, Manuel, and Naran are all in the running. For the next update, they're still in there. They're going to get some praise. So we're up against Taha. Premiership side coming to visit us. Where are they in the Premiership? They are eighth. Is the Premiership going? Mahisha on 20, a bit like us, running away with it. So Taha are known as the Vanillas because the island of Taha, or Taha, is where most of French Polynesian vanilla is produced. They also harvest pearls as well in the lagoon that we've got in the middle. And it's a smallish island that actually shares the coral reef with the uh, Reiti, um island underneath it. So they're very close together, so the Skybrights and Tahas could be rivals eventually. Boss is in the quarterfinals. Papi Excelsior from the capital. Tetaroa from our division. Hedion Rimtara. Exiles, Mahisha and Huahin, the Eels. We've beaten the Exiles and Rimatara, I think, so they're all good ones we could eventually end up with. Just running out of yes, we, can, we can at least knit. Oh, no, we can't. See, this is the issue. The same with the other guy that just got recalled, Joel David. If they're on international duty, there is nothing I can do about that. That, that doesn't count. It's not like he had five games and he played one, or five games and there's only two he could possibly even play in, and he played in one of them as a sub, so... I might need to make a note of that manager. So going for a 4-4-1-1, four, four, one, one, which I've not actually played against yet, I don't think. Good run, impress, don't care, they really don't care. I like Taha's badge, and I like their kit generally as well. Or the kit colour combination. They're kind of on my mental list of teams I would be willing to manage. So if things go horribly wrong at the humpbacks, or if things go really well and I've, I move on at some point to try and improve another team, I think Taha might be one of them. I think in my head I'm thinking maybe the um, Eruptors. Taha, the Rapper Feral Cats are a favourite. Um, the Vahanga Vines, because they're a pretty small team, or the Totengegi Wings would also be another uh, potential option for me. And the Nukahuku Spearheads are all ones I like for various reasons, either because it's something about the island, or it's something about the badge. Oh, that's a good shot. I can't pronounce that name. Mana Riti Roa Warren. Mana Rite Roa Warren. That is my best guess. Up through a slight crowd and then it goes. Okay, so. If we lose, I don't have to pay my scout his bonus for the Inter Island Cup. But if we win. We've got a reasonable chance then of the Inter Island Cup. We will go into the semi finals against some potentially quite beatable teams. Obviously, not over yet. Go on, Naren, show me how oh. That one looked like it was nailed on if it hadn't been blocked. Matar and Papite have gone in onto the leads. We've still got plenty of time to get back in this. One goal is not that bad. Came back from two goals down against the Oaxaca Chevres. We can do one against the Vanillas. Naren looks exhausted and we should sub him. It's half an hour. Oh, Chisome. 
I'm not sure if McIntyre meant to get that to him or if it kind of it was a weird shot, but Chisholm does it. Let's see, so McIntyre. Yeah, that was a shot that was deflected towards him. So another goal for Chisholm that is from a deflection or a scrappy ball. So he is a real goal predator. And I think for me that's kind of why pressing forward works better than a poacher. I've always found... I mean, yeah, that was a penalty. Sorry, Richards, but that was a bit bad. Picard. Saved. That's good. Hamish has done alright. He's not going to get his uh, clean sheet bonus because he's already scored, but I kind of wish I could give it to him for saving the penalty. Let's get it out. Clear it. Calm it down. Should I tell them to calm it down? Yeah, calm down. Yeah, so Chisholm is disinterested after that. Okay, I'm just never shouting at you again. So Chisholm's pressing forward, but I found in FM19 at least that pressing forward seemed to work better than um, poachers actually perching. To me, the poacher role is always played as if it's a lot more static. So the players have put in that role. Oh, they, they don't hang on the shoulder of the defender as much and run onto balls through that. They just seem to be stood next to them and then nothing much happens after that. And maybe it's just the players I've been using. Maybe you've experienced something different. But I always feel like if I've got a player who can play poacher and pressing forward, if I tell them to play pressing forward, they do better. Or if I've got two players and one can do pressing forward and one can do poacher, the pressing forward does better. Just more of a, a predator, more of an actual poacher with movement. And I know the pressing forward is kind of like a an alteration or re-skinning almost of the defensive forward role from last year, which I never really used that much. Um, but I wonder if this oh, it's bubbled through. It's raining now. It, and slippery. Yeah, but I do. I wonder if there's some kind of fundamental instruction dif oh. difference. Yeah, that was. There's some mistakes creeping in. As far as I'm aware, there are no replays. I think the matches get dealt with on the day. Uh, there are some cups. I think the regional cups I might mention go to Golden Goal in extra time, bringing that back. Okay, Richards is injured. Webb. Save it for the moment because we've got another half hour at least to play. Yeah, I don't think there's golden goal in the this cup, in the Inter-Island Cup. I think it's extra time and penalties. So the Eels are trashing the Eruptors who are top of the Premiership, so that takes out one particular favourite. Tetero and the Excelsiors are drawing, and Tetero have got the man advantage, and Rimatara just being Rimatara. But we can beat them. We know we can beat them. Bring someone on. I guess Williamson's got to come on for Henderson. Williamson just doesn't have much pace or anything there. He can finish. He's got finishing ten. It's the pace. No, he's got pace. He just doesn't have acceleration. But he's strong. Utility man Leclerc is on the pitch as well. Cock that one up. I mean, looking at the stats, we don't deserve to win it. Twenty shots to six. Get it forward. He had everything set up for him then. One big long cross raking cross field pass across the other wing would have done the job then and it was on. 
Okay, extra time. Uh, penalties. Gonna cost them potentially. So Rimitara through, the Eels are through, and then us and Tetaroa have gone to extra time. Far from pleased. See? Now they're listening. Looks fired up. Say it batter them. That is part of the problem with them looking fired up sometimes, because my team is a little bit on the sloppy side. They're just flying. They're not being aggressive. They just cut controller legs, flying with it. Williamson took that well. Wait, little clerks. Neither of those players are the ones I wanted to be in that position, really. Apparently they're playing with more caution. They needn't. That needs another look just to see exactly who it is who messed it up. I think it was Bennett who just didn't hold it the first time. Yeah, that was definitely Bennett's fault. I mean, number four, who's that? I don't know. Is it him? Yes, yeah, a chant, one of the centre backs. Hmm. Well, if we lose, we lose. Again, we can't say we deserve to win by any stretch. Can't have any complaints. Again, not many people back because of the way I pile everyone into the box. Come on, chase them down. <laughs> they could have ended it then. Put us out of our misery. Not bad. Something from nothing. But yeah, we've not deserved to win this. The board only wanted us to get to the first round, so they'll be happy enough that we've got this far. The extra money if we'd have won it would have been nice, but we're so far off the final still. You can't guarantee we would have got that extra cash money anyway. Next season, team's a bit more settled. We can work out what we want to do. We'll just have to try and win the mutiny trophy instead. I realise I'm writing it off even though we've got like another 10 minutes to play, but I've generally not got a good feeling about this match. Such a good name. Mana Rita Aroa Warren. So a lot of, because we've got the different island nation chains and we have to, I've had to replace some of the actual nations from Oceania to fit them into the qualifying. Because of that, they take on the name database for that nation. So I think um, the Exiles, for example, the Bass Islanders, might have replaced Papua New Guinea and Tonga. So their names look more like Papua New Guinea or Tongan uh, names. Whereas the teacher names are the standard teacher ones. Again, I can't remember who else was replaced. Maybe the Solomon Islands or the Marshall Islands. I think it was the Marshall Islands or something like that for some of the other ones. So it's it's interesting when you see some names come through that are really, really tricky. Yeah. Greyed out, does that mean he's... Is he a grey player? Yeah. I don't know how or why they used him. I feel disrespected because they've got a full team. They didn't need to do that. That's just rude. Very rude. Well, thanks for watching. We're now out of the cup. We've got an extra £7. Uh, £7 £700.
uh, for that. Um, I'm going to play on for maybe two or three matches. So I'll probably play Pukapuka, Rumitara, and Uapoa, and we'll come back for Tetaroa and maybe Magdalena. Uh, thanks very much for watching.